Welcome to DRIVE, the start of your journey towards organisational excellence. In the next few minutes we will explore the concept of the balanced scorecard and how taking a balanced view of your organisation can deliver sustainable improvement in your performance without the need of significant investment. In this example we will explore using the balanced scorecard in an organisation that is focused on providing welfare and care services. These services could be provided to the elderly, disabled, disadvantaged or even animals. What's important is that the central goal is align the organisation behind maximising the welfare care provided from limited resources. Most welfare charity organisations operate on incredibly tight budgets as they seek to maximise the investment in providing care. In the next few minutes we will explore the concept of the balanced scorecard and how taking a balanced view of your organisation can help deliver sustained improvement in your performance and ensure the benefit of every penny goes into providing a better quality of life for your patients. Before considering the balanced scorecard concept in more detail, let's first consider why taking a balanced approach is so important to any organisation. What happens in your operations is a direct result of what you do, how you do it and when you do it. Success is often put down to being in the right place at the right time, but it's more than that. It's also about acting in the right way. We are now going to take a closer look at what can happen when you focus your activities in certain areas and the impact your efforts can have on your strategic outcomes. A greater emphasis on leadership, people and continuous improvement in your organisation will ensure appropriate processes and adequately trained people are operating within your organisation. The impact of this approach should be highlighted through the effectiveness of your processes and the level of engagement with your stakeholders. The net result of aligning your activities should see an increased impact through your efforts. We have previously looked at the importance of alignment within an organisation and the drive to understand the cause and effect linkages between certain aspects of your internal operations. We now need to apply this concept where the focus is on the client patient and where they become the centre of importance for the scorecard. To do this, visualise a pyramid containing each of the elements stacked as shown. We've already discussed that the best outcome is where strategy is driven down through the elements and performance is driven up. This visual map will become our template for defining the areas of the organisation to be analysed, monitored and highlight themes to be addressed that will create significant improvements. We will retain the elements of the scorecard, but the emphasis on the patient is now very much the top of the pyramid. Finance sits alongside people to underpin the level of service provided. This model is now set out for a funded driven organisation, where maximising the output from limited resource is the main driver. Now that we have a greater understanding of the cause and effect linkages between the areas of activity, let us consider in more detail the key areas of focus. Within the strategic and core coal areas, the key focus is on maximising the welfare care and those metrics that show the impact of all the activities in place. The next level of focus is on the effectiveness of the activities and the level of engagement with key stakeholders. The next section focuses on the processes, communication and training in place to deliver the services to the patient. At the bottom, underpinning the above activities, are the metrics measuring leadership, people and the progress of continuous improvement initiatives. Finance budgets are also tracked as part of this process. The next stage is to consider the pyramid in a bit more detail. The diagram has now been evolved to show a basic Excel dashboard showing some suggested measurement for a charity or welfare model. The process starts with the goal of the organisation which will centre on providing the maximum welfare care to the chosen group. Ultimately this is the goal that the entire organisation will be aligned behind. The next layer in is the core goals. These measures show those things that contribute the most to delivering the strategic purpose of the organisation and a sample is shown here. The following layer considers what the patient values in the organisation. First the quality of the services being offered to the patient and how effective these are. Next is the organisation's reputation and image. Finally comes the patient relationship. In this example the relationship is likely to be very different, no more so than if the patient is not human. 
For this reason, patient relationship should be extended to include other stakeholders who could be friends, family, carers or interested parties such as governing and monitoring bodies. Next is the vehicle of your organisation and the way in which you deliver your services to the patient. Again three areas need to be considered. First those processes directly involved in delivering the care services to the patient. Secondly, all those departments, processes and services that while not directly involved in the patient's treatment play a very important part of the overall care provided. Finally, the management of safety, quality and environment throughout the organisation. The final part of the pyramid is split into two key areas that will deliver the performance of the organisation, these being the funding available and the people that will deliver the service. Within the people section there is a clear focus on skills and passion. First is passion, which covers the level of morale in the organisation and the effectiveness of communication. Both are inherently linked. Consideration and focus will also be given to the health and well-being of the staff, both employed and voluntary. The other area for review is the skills capability of every staff individual, from temporary care assistant to the CEO. A detailed skills matrix considering the technical and soft skills, industry and local knowledge will highlight the skills gaps that collectively could be having a significant impact on the effectiveness of your services. The final parts of the bottom layer of the pyramid are the financial resource measures. Budget constraints will always be considerable in a welfare charity organisation as demand for services will always outstrip supply. Focus is also needed on the capital investment to improve care and services and again close focus on expected returns from both financial and non-financial measures are critical. This template will now enable us to review and monitor a diverse set of measures that collectively will highlight the themes running through your operations which if managed effectively will drive the quality and quantity of care provided. As a brief example of the scorecard in use, the dashboard has been highlighted with some sample data. Here we're going to look at a scenario of how to use it. The leadership team in this scenario are looking to drive forward the performance of their strategic objectives and deliver a greater level of service to their patients. They have identified that some of the issues relate to performance KPIs of their service delivery and this is constraining the number of active cases they can actually manage at any one time. Continual tracking of the measurement across the whole scorecard starts to show some of the problems deeper within the organisation and these could be potentially driving the quality of the service being delivered down. Skill shortages and issues with well-being are being flagged in the people section of the scorecard and this is being compounded by staff budgets being flagged within the finance section of the scorecard. Further investigation has shown that due to skill shortages staff are working longer hours to cope with demand. Sickness is resulting from the additional hours, meaning the staff have had to work even more hours to cover for colleagues. This has pushed up spends against budget due to the additional overtime. Despite the drive to deliver more services, the organisation is now underperforming compared to the resources available. The leadership team can now create activities on dealing with these root causes and track the impact of these changes through the scorecard as improvements take place. The previous sample has been taken from our basic Excel scorecard models. These models can be implemented on your system so that you retain complete control over the data and their use. Each dashboard can be bespoke to your organisation ensuring the metrics that are used are relevant to your organisation and your desired outcomes. Each model comes with three basic screens which is a front dashboard showing a snapshot of the organisation at a reporting point in time a tracker screen showing the progress of your organisation and an input screen. The inputs can be further developed linking into other data sources or expanded to show further drilling down into supporting data. Again this information is bespoke to your organisation and your budget available. We have now come to the end of our presentation showing how to use a scorecard in a charity or welfare organisation. We hope you can see how the DRIVE concept will give you a greater understanding of your operations and how to align your organisation behind your core goals. Cool